All right, gang, here we go. Uh, this is Chem 2, Unit 3, Part 1. So we're going to talk about this unit. covers Chapter 3 in our textbook, um, talk about chemical reactions, reaction stoichiometry, so on and so forth. A lot of this first section here will be review over stuff that you hopefully remember from when you took Chem 1 last year or the year before. Anyway, so that's kind of what we're, we're looking at here. All right, chemical reactions, reaction stoichiometry. All right, so stoichiometry in general is a really awesome word. Like you tell people, oh, I'm studying stoichiometry. They're like, oh, you're about the smartest person I've ever met. Okay, <laughs> so, okay. And, but really all it is, it's the area of study that examines quantities and substances consumed and produced in chemical reactions. So we're just talking about, oh, we started with so much of this and then made so much of this, or uh, we made so much of this, how much did we start with, or did what's the percentage of how much we made, et cetera, et cetera. That's essentially what stoichiometry is. And it was uh, kind of built on the idea of the law of conservation of mass and we talked about this earlier in the year and this was by this guy named Antoine Lavoisier you know it's a French chemist it's a, anyway and so this quote I find it pretty amusing so you can pause and read it to yourself but make sure you do it in a French accent just so you sell it all right so when we're looking at chemical reactions uh, it's always helpful to be able to write them down so we can communicate and picture what's going on okay so uh, we use chemical equations and this is how we write out chemical reactions so a couple of things that are always happen in, chemi in re uh, chemical equations is we put the reactants on the left side and the products on the right side the reactants are what we're starting with and the products are what we're ending with all right um, we use an arrow to separate them never an equal sign always an arrow to separate reactants and products and then when you've got two uh, different things on one side like so here we've got uh, hydrogen and oxygen that are reacting with one another we separate them with a plus sign all right if we were making two different products then we'd have a plus sign on the other side and then whatever the product is all right so uh, notice that the subscripts here versus the coefficients coefficients are is the fancy word for things that go in front and subscripts are the fancy word for the little number that's often to the bottom on the side okay so anyway so here's hydrogen and it's so it says here this means that we've got two hydrogens why does it keep doing that we've got two hydrogens okay and uh, so that's it. this is one set of hydrogen molecules. This is the other set, so one, two. And then this two means that each of these sets of hydrogen comes in two pairs. So look, we've got two little white balls here. So it's one, two, and then one, two, all right? And then over here, we've got oxygen here, all right? And then one, two. So notice that oxygen comes in pairs. And you should recognize that both of these are diatoms from the, your Hofbrinkles, all right? Um, anyway, and so over here we make two different water molecules. Now notice how we follow this law of conservation of mass. We started with uh, four total hydrogens on the left side, one, two, three, four, and we ended with four total hydrogens on the right side, one, two, three, four. And we had started with two total oxy oxygen atoms on the left side, and we ended with two oxygen atoms on the right side. All right. Um, now the trick is that we have to be able to balance these equations. All right. So essentially, what we're doing is we're going to add coefficients onto these uh, these um, molecules or atoms or whatever that are appearing in our chemical equation in order to make sure that we start and end with the same number of those atoms. Because in a chemical equation, we're never ever going to create new elements that weren't a reactant. So all of the elements that were a reactant have to appear as a product, and there can't be new ones that were a product uh, from what there was as reactants. All right. So anyway, so we have chemical equations over here. Okay, we got to be able to balance them. Now they start here, give you some good pointers with what to, how to name or how to go about balancing them. All right. Um, remember that what you know one key uh, to this is you only ever balance it by changing this, um, the coefficients, never the subscripts. Okay, so whatever the subscript, we have to leave that alone. Okay, um, and then so start usually start with the elements that are uh, only in one thing on the left and or right all right uh, that's usually a good a valid way to start these can get kind of tricky and kind of like solving a sudoku puzzle so don't get too attached to any of your coefficients you might have to erase them and restart all right so we'll do, we're going to do a practice problem okay uh, so it says the unbalanced equation for the reaction between methane and bromine is this okay i think i have to keep going in order to get the arrow to pop up all right so anyway, so let's balance this. All right, so we got carbon, hydrogen, bromine, carbon, bromine, hydrogen, bromide. All right, so um, 
So they're suggesting starting with the thing that only appears in one thing on each side. So we got a carbon here, one carbon there. So that's balanced. All right, that's good. Um, here we've got four hydrogens, but over here we've o we've only got one. So we'll put a four right here and see how that how that jams for us. Okay, so we've got so our carbons and hydrogen are balanced. Now let's look at our bromines. So our bromines, there's two of them here uh, on the on the reactant side. All right, on the product side, I have four here. And then I've got four times a one, so four here. So on the product side for bromine, I have eight bromines, but over here I only have two bromines, so I'll throw a four in here as well. All right, and we can just double check one carbon, one carbon, uh, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, eight bromines, eight bromines. Life's grand and dandy. So it says, what is the value of the coefficient in front of the bromine? So it's got to be that guy there. All right, let's do one more. Uh, balance this guy here. So iron, oxygen. All right. So this iron here. Uh, there's two irons over there. So we're gonna we'll put that two there. All right. Now the oxygen. Now there's two oxygens and three oxygens. Uh oh. So in order to make those bounce, we'll have to find the, co the greatest common factor or the next uh, common factor. So we'll put a. Oh my goodness. We'll put a three here. We'll put a two here. All right. So now there's six oxygens over here and two oxygen or six over oxygens over here. But notice that we screwed up our irons. Now there's four irons over here, right? Two times two, that's four. So that means we got to change this four, two into a four. All right. So now we've got four irons, four irons, six oxygens, six oxygens. All right. Uh, this slide here is just kind of helping us picture why we put. Uh, we use coefficients instead of subscripts when we're balancing chemical equations. All right. Um, so, like this example here, we've got water. If we say we want two water molecules, right? Then uh, this means we've got two water molecules. But say you had you wanted two oxygens, but not two more hydrogens. If you put that two there, then really instead of saying you've got water, now you've got this guy, which is hydrogen peroxide, and uh, which is a totally different molecule, right? Made a totally different thing than what we had before. So these two reactions here that we get down here are actually totally different things. We've got two hot, this uh, hydrogen oxygen combination forming water and then hydrogen oxygen combining to forming hydrogen peroxide very different molecules all right uh, other symbols you should be aware of okay um, states of matter okay if there's a G that means it's a gas L is liquid S is solid and then this one here that throws off some people is AQ for aqueous all right, aqueous means that it's dissolved in water. Nine times out of ten in our class, if you have some sort of solution that's in the liquid state, it's aqueous. All right, uh, most of the time, it's just because liquids aren't super common. Um, they are, at least in, in organic chemistry high school level. Um, so we don't hardly have any liquids because we don't get to play with mercury. Uh, bromine is, kind of evaporates really quickly, so that it, there's not really a lot to do with that. Um, and then other than that, like if you had some sort of metal that was a liquid, you'd have a lot bigger problems than whether or not what the state it was. And, okay. So anyway, um, so those are your so the symbols. So you need to make sure you memorize those and know what they all mean. Uh, and then also this guy here, this this delta symbol, this means a change in heat. All right. Uh, so this means that heat is needed for the reaction to take place. So if you have methane and you're reacting with oxygen, um, you know methane it, it will burn in oxygen uh, and you know create a warm flame and all that jazz. But uh, in order to get it started, you have to give it some sort of spark, some sort of heat. All right. So we represent the fact that heat is needed for the reaction to take place by putting the triangle, the little delta sign above the reaction arrow. All right. That's what that's for. Okay. Uh, and we're going to just talk about some simple patterns of chemical reactivity here. Okay, so combination reactions. All right, this is the general outline of a combination reaction right here. All right, okay, uh, so you've got two different things, they're coming together, combining to form one new thing. So two more substances react to form one product. So uh, here you go, you've got carbon solid reacting with oxygen, forming CO2. This reaction here is essentially what happens. Um, and coal plants, right? Because coal is essentially just plain carbon. And then it's burning with oxygen, you're forming CO2. Yay, carbon dioxide. All right. Um, in class, we probably did this one as an example. Magnesium, we burned it in oxygen. Okay, here's our balanced chemical equation down here. So we start with magnesium solid and oxygen. All right. And they combined, combined to form magnesium oxide. 
All right. Now, how did we know that it was one magnesium and one oxygen? Well, in order to do that, we had to look at the charges. Magnesium is an alkaline metal, right? Al sorry, an alkaline earth metal. So here, look at that. It formed a plus two charge right there. All right, plus two. That's I kind of covered up the numbers there, didn't I? So maybe we'll erase that guy. All right. So it formed that plus two charge. All right. Boom. So there's our plus two charge, our, our magnesium. And then the oxygen also forms a two minus charge because it's the row next to the halogen. So it forms a two minus charge. All right. Uh, so because they're both two, that means we need one of each of them to add up. So we just get one of each. And then we went through and, and balanced it. All right. Decomposition reactions are pretty much the opposite of combination reactions. So instead of remember combination, you're starting with two different things and forming one thing. In decomposition reactions, you're starting with one thing and forming two new things. All right. Uh, so here's some examples of some common decomposition reactions. So this is the potassium chloride. No, uh, chlorate. Sorry, potassium chlorate. Okay. It's uh, decomposing into potassium chloride and oxygen. All right. Um, so like a classic example of this is sodium azide. Sodium azide ha is sodium attached to several nitrogens and when it reacts the nitrogens escape from the sodium and turns into a gas very very quickly and then the sodium gets left behind to bond with um, Oh, it kind of depends on what the other part of the reaction is but something probably benign like sodium chloride or something like that. All right. Um, decomposition reaction. So this is one so in general, decomposition reactions and combination decomposition reactions uh, specifically, I'll have to tell you what it turns into. Those two things, I'll have to give you some sort of hint, unless it's a metal carbonate. All right. So this guy here, this would be a metal carbonate. Calcium's a metal, right? Carbonate is uh, the carbonate part, CO3. Okay. And so it's it always makes the two same products. It always makes carbon dioxide. Okay, that's CO2, that's this guy right here, and a metal oxide, that's this guy right here. So a metal oxide, so that means a metal attached to an oxygen. So that guy right there, metal oxide. All right? So uh, that's one that you need to have memorized this, this trend here. Okay? You need to make sure you know that. All right? Other than that, decomposition reaction, I'll pretty much have to tell you what's going on. All right? So anyway, um, so let's work through this practice, practice problem here. Okay? Um, so it says, which of the following reactions is the balanced equation that represents the decomposition reaction that occurs when silver 1 oxide is heated? So let's think about what silver 1 oxide looks like first. So silver uh, 1 oxide, so remember that 1 means that the silver has a charge of plus 1, and then oxygen, and so oxide uh, always has a charge of 2 minus. So that means um, this will turn into silver 2 oxide, like that, so Ag2O. Now, let's think. Um, so let's see if that narrows it down at all. There's an Ag2O. OK, this is, so it can't be A. All right, um, this is kind of written funny. And then it can't be B. OK, and so it could be uh, C, D, or E. OK, all right. What else could happen? Well, we know that when it decomposes, you can only make two things, because this thing is only two things. So we got to make only silver and oxygen. All right, so this guy's going to make silver. Okay, and then we're gonna get oxygen. Now remember, oxygen's a diatomic, so we gotta make sure we do the two there. All right, and silver is a um, a metal, so it's not diatomic, so it just kind of chills there by itself. All right, and then we gotta balance it, so we need, uh, let's see, silvers, so let's think about this real quick before I write anything down. That means we need two silvers here, but there's two oxygens here, right? So that, I know for sure I'm gonna have to put a two here, which means I need four silvers. All right, so uh, silver oxide, four silvers, oxygen. Are there, are there two answers that are right? Are D and E the same? Am I going crazy? AG2O solid, four AG silver. Yeah, these uh, D and E are both right, uh, exactly the same. So C is not right, right? Because this, it's not balanced, right? There's uh, one oxygen here and two oxygens here. So C is right out. But D and E, let's look one more time just to make sure I haven't like gone absolutely crazy. Four silver, O2. Yeah, these two are exactly the same. So D or E. Yeah, okay. So D or E is good. All right. D 
D or E. Now let's do one more, one where we're starting from just words. So let's do A. So it says solid mercury 2 sulfide decomposing into its component elements when heated. All right, so mercury 2 sulfide. So mercury, okay, so remember that means uh, the mercury, the 2 means it has a charge of 2 plus, and then sulfide is underneath oxygen, so it has a charge of 2 minus. All right, so that means we need, uh, we'll crisscross and they'll both cancel out, so they become 1s. So we'll have mercury solid, uh, mercury sulfide, and then it says it's solid, so we'll go to and put an S there like that. All right, uh, and it says it's decomposing, so I don't need that plus, I'll need a, a reaction arrow. And it says it becomes its component elements. So that's uh, mercury, all right, mercury at room temperature is a liquid, so we'll put an L there. All right, and then sulfur, well, let's think is sulfur diatomic, uh, Hoff Brinkle, there's no S in that, so it's just a sulfur by itself. And if we look at the periodic table, we can see that elemental sulfur is a solid. All right, so we get that guy there. All right, um, and then we got to balance it, and it's all balanced. One, 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 one. Nice. All right, finally, combustion reactions. These are the most fun. Okay, uh, they're rapid reactions that produce a flame. Okay, they almost always use oxygen, and then a hydrocarbon. Okay, hydrocarbon. Hydrocarbons are something that have carbons and hydrogens, and then some other things, sometimes nitrogens, oxygens, things like that, okay? Uh, car combustion reactions, all right, always form the same two products, carbon dioxide and water, all right? Now, that is if it's a complete reaction. I can't remember. So if it's a complete reaction, it always forms carbon dioxide and water. Sometimes you get an incomplete reaction. Where do I want to out? You know, if you get it, sometimes, most of the time in the real world, you'll get a, what's called an incomplete reaction, where it doesn't quite react as all at way. And when it does that, then you get um, you get a little bit of carbon soot, and you get a little bit of carbon monoxide. Okay, are the products of an incomplete combustion. Okay, we'll do when we get to pre, uh, limiting reactants. I'll show you a pretty cool demo of this and uh, seeing this carbon soot being formed. Okay, so anyway, so in this example here, they're taking propane, C3H8, reacting it with water, or er, oxygen, and it's forming this carbon dioxide and water, all right? All right, so let's do one here, all right? Oh my goodness, they give us so many options. I hope none of them are exactly the same. So let's see. Uh, so write the balance equation for the reaction that occurs when ethylene glycol, all right, that's the reaction, burns in air. So let's write this guy out. So C2H4OH2, uh, okay, uh, react, burns in air. I'm pretty sure this is a liquid, but I don't remember off the top of my head, nor does it. Oh, all these are liquid. Cool. All right, so I kind of cheated a little bit. So it's liquid. All right, uh, CO2, gas, and then H2O is also a gas in a combustion reaction. All right, so let's see here. We've got to balance it. So with these, oh shoot, you know what? I, I made like a, a huge rookie mistake. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are yelling at your computers right now, like, what a nub. How could he forget the oxygen? It's a combustion reaction. All right, so C2, H4. OH2 plus O2. All right, gas. I forgot the liquid in there. All right, so now we got to balance it. So we got two carbons here, uh, one carbon here. So here's what we're going to do we're going to change things up and we're going to write in our things here in a different color. All right, so, um, so we need two carbons here. All right. Now what? Well, let's do hydrogens. I always do oxygens last because there, there's a trick to balancing them I'm about to teach you. All right, so hydrogens. So I've got uh, four right here, but I got two more here. So that's six. All right, uh, I've got two hydrogens here. So that means I need this, this tentative three. All right, now let's see what, what else can we do. So carbons and hydrogens are balanced. Now we gotta worry about our oxygens and life's gonna be, become exciting. So on this side of the period, on the, this side of the equation, this right hand side, the product side, I have um, four oxygens here and uh, five, three oxygens here. So four plus three is seven. So I've got seven oxygens on that side of the period of the equation here, all right? 
seven. So let's just, so we got seven oxygens and let's just make a note of that so we don't forget. And then over here, now I've got a two here, okay? And I've got a two here, so I've got four oxygens. Now, all right, now hang on to your hats. I'm about to blow your minds, you ready? So what I do with something like this is I break the rules for half a second to make my life easier and just do a little bit of math. And I say, well, what if I could have half of something? So if I've got two here, that means I need um, five more oxygens, but these come in pairs. So really I need five halves of these, right? I need two and a half of this, so five halves. So then I can take it and I'll just multiply all my coefficients by two in order to get rid of this, right? So I'll multiply this guy by two, all right? If I multiply this by two, my two cancels and I'll just be left with five, right? If uh, then this will become, my two will go away, I'll become four and this will go away and I'll become six, all right? So my balanced chemical reaction should be two, five, four, six. All right, um, let's see if any of them match. Two, five, four, six, it's gotta be B. Boom, noise, we did it. Well done, gang, well done. And that's it for this video. You made it through the first little bit of this. Okay, this is pretty benign, pretty easy, no worries here. Uh, pretty soon though, we're gonna get into some math, which is really where this stuff gets really fun. Anyway, uh, let me know if you have any questions.